So I was, I was just looking for that scripture that says, that let not a man uh, uh, who's putting on his armor boast like the man who's taken it off. <laughs> so, <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank, thank you, uh, Pastor Rachel. Bless you. Uh, would you turn with me? Uh, I have all kinds of beautiful notes up there and all kinds of stuff that we're not doing this morning as of about five minutes ago. <laughs> so if you would turn with me to the book of Joshua. Joshua, how many know Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. And uh, thank God for... Uh, his obedience in that season, and thank the Lord for his understanding that the walk with God is one step at a time, one day at a time, though vision is out there for what we want to see and what we want to do, but in our walk with God, we must be careful, always, and uh, so are you, are you at, uh, in Joshua, the sixth chapter? And uh, we're going to start at the verse 26, and then we're going to drop down to chapter 7. So this may be a micro-message. It may be a mega-message. We're going to believe God and depend on Him for whatever comes along, okay? Yes. Amen. Thank God for the working of His presence. Let's pray first. Father, we come to You, Lord. We thank You, Lord. We don't want to be those who are arrogant or have no humility and and make great boasts, but God, we want to boast in you, and we want to, you to know that we think you're great, and we know that you do awesome and mighty things, and we know we can trust you, God, with our whole being. We can trust you, God, because we know that you've proved yourself to be trustworthy, but more than anything, God, you have shed abroad your love into our hearts, God, and drawn us near. So we thank you, Lord, for that. We give you praise. Teach us what you want us to know this morning, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord, and thank you for your promises that are in this word, God. We give you praise in your name. Amen. Amen. You all can be seated. Well, no. I'm going to stand up. You've got to keep your joints working there. <laughs> Up, down, up, down. Okay, verse 26. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord, who rises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with its firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all the country. Verse 1 of chapter 7 says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass, regarding the accursed things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabai, Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, <clears throat> took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. <clears throat> now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and said to them, and spoke to them, saying, Go and spy in the country. So the men went and spied at Ai. <clears throat> and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Watch these words, Do not let the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack Ai. Do not weary all the people, therefore the people of Ai are few. So about 3,000 men went up there with the, from the people. Wow. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim and struck them down on the descent. Therefore, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Joshua tore his clothes and fell on the earth and his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. And he and the elders, and they put dust on their head. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people 
over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites and to destroy us. Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the land. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what shall we do for your great name? So he's worried about God's great name, huh? Verse 10 says, so the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie down? Why do you lie thus on your face? Get up. Somebody say, get up. Get up. Say it like your mama's yelling at you. Get up. Get up. <laughs> Amen. Y'all can be seated. <laughs> I was going to shout after you got seated. Get up. No. <laughs> I think that what God, you know, God is very patient. And he's extremely generous with us. And he gives us uh, so much latitude in things that we do. And God is willing to, uh, uh, to be with us and walk with us. But when God says, do this, don't do that, guess what? Don't do that. Do this, but don't do that. Because we want to pay attention to what God says because... The Lord is a consuming fire. That's right. And so what I'm seeing here <clears throat> in this scripture just jumped out at me this morning as I was looking at it and reminiscing about what God has done for his people in different lands and crossing over and being able to uh, accommodate what uh, men want. And God has allowed us to possess this land, these United States. He's given us a privilege to be here. Yes. Now, how many know that privilege comes with responsibility? Yes. If you're not going to be responsible, you're not going to be privileged. I, I've heard this all said over and over and over again. And By the way, can we get off, get off of this thing where everything everybody says is a racist comment? Can we stop that? If there's a racist comment, shame on that person. They need to be rebuked. But quit making everything a racist comment. You know, oranges are racist. Apples are racist. Bananas are racist. Give me a break. What's not, what's not racist? Just remember this. A white potato is brown on the outside. So we're all, we're all the same. We're all the same. So what we're seeing here is that Israel has sinned according to what God said. Now how many in Israel sinned? One. But when God saw them, he saw them combined as a people. And so when he sent them out to defeat Ai, God knew what he was doing. But you see what man said was, we know better than what you're, you're, you're saying, God. We can go up and do this thing. You know, if Achan would have repented, before they went up to Ai, I'm guessing that they would have taken Ai in a flash. But what happens is, is people that do things wrong, wrongly, people that sin, they want to tuck it under something. They want to fold it under. They don't, they don't want people to know, you know, that, you know, that part of it. And because they don't, we, we tuck things under in our nation right now, what we've got is a nation that is in big trouble because nobody's in charge. Honestly, right now what's happening is there's so much confusion going back and forth, back and forth. You know, we need the presence of God. And one thing I have determined, and I've discovered this is so for me in my life, and Pastor Pam and I did talk about this this morning, is 
I'm setting my face like a flint and I'm depending on God. Because the truth is, I don't know what God is doing right now. I've heard prophets, you know, I've had dreams. I've had all kinds of stuff coming at me. And uh, with uncertainty now, I'm saying that I, I don't know for sure. I know what God is doing right now. I can follow him. And I walk with him. And it, because I walk with him and I depend on him and I set my face like a flint with God to be wherever God wants me to be, that I'm going to be all right going forward. You're going to be not just all right, but you're going to be good going forward if you'll depend on God. Because I'm hearing people across our nation that are literally, some people are losing their salvation. They're losing their sanctification over what's going on in America right now. It's because, you know, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we're going to remember the name of the Lord our God. And so because we're going to remember the name of the Lord our God, we're going to depend on God and what God says and what God does. Now, uh, the thing I've discovered is sometimes God's got the big plan and the little plan. The big plan is what we're going to look forward to and we're going to go and this is what we're going to, going to happen. We're going to go into the land and we're going to occupy. The little plan is we're going to walk rightly while we're getting ready to go into the land. Because everybody needs to have a, a little plan. I'm not talking about an A plan and a B plan. I'm talking about a, a little plan that fits into a big plan. And so what we've got in our nation is people that are now saying, well, you know, I was sure I heard God say this, or I'm sure I heard God say that. And anytime you do something that creates violence, you're doing something wrong. Unless God tells you to go to war. Now, God told them when to go to war and who to take when they went, when they went to war. And I believe God's still doing that. But the truth is, most people don't know what God is doing when it comes to war, and therefore, they get themselves in trouble in war. Are you with me on this? See, Joshua sent these men out to go and spy out the land, and they came back, and they told him what they were going to do. You know, Joshua had a plan, but he didn't listen to their plan, his plan, he listened to their plan. And so because he listened to their plan, he got himself in trouble with uh, the, the nation and with God. I believe Joshua was in trouble with God right here, right now. The Lord had to tell him to get, get with it, get up. But Joshua was one of Israel, and the, the scripture says that Israel sinned. So he was the one that was responsible for what was going on. And, you know, Achan, his sin was that he was a thief. And because he stole from God. Right. Not because he took a, a gold wedge from somebody else that was the enemy. You know, people could say, well, yeah, you know, we're going to purge the place and take it all. But, you know, God gave a specific commandment. When, he, when you go in there, when you go in there and you destroy this place, Jericho, Jericho was to be used by the tithe from God. And it was the first fruits tithe. It wasn't just the tithe. It was the first fruits. And so Achan, he put his hand to what was the first fruits. And he was destroyed. Our president that we have right now, I believe that uh, he has great intentions about so many things. And I have no criticism for him because he spent the last four years defending himself for something that he didn't do. But if you're going to be in position to be a leader, you're going to get accused of a lot of things you didn't do. This is just what happens. If anybody's ever been a boss at a place or, you know, Scott, your, your boss down there, and uh, if something comes up missing, guess who they, ru they run to? Y-O-U. Not because you took it, but because you should know it, you know, where it is. Like, you know, should know where everything is supposed to be. 
Most of the time it's unrealistic, by the way. But people have a way of doing things that bring confusion. And they want to make their confusion seem like it's the reality wherever they're at. You know, this confusion that we had at the, the uh, Capitol building the other day, it was not all unnecessary. It was all unnecessary. But it happened. And I personally don't believe that Donald Trump is responsible for all that happened. But the truth is, he was responsible for calling together that meeting. He was the one that set the agenda. And because of that, anything that happened and went wrong became his problem. And so Joshua's got a problem here, and he needs to deal with it. And Achan... He had a problem, and his whole family paid the price for it. In America, we believe in democracy. We're actually, we're not a de democracy. We're a republic. And there is a difference. But we want to, you know what democracy is, is everybody gets a voice, and everybody gets the opportunity to make the decision. You know what happens with that? Nothing. It's total chaos. That's what a democracy does. But a republic is different. That's why we have the, what do you call them, the, the voting the way that we vote. I'm sorry? Yeah, the electoral college. I knew it was some college. <laughs> I think it's probably not even a college. It's probably a university of I don't know what I'm doing thing. But... <laughs> Leave it, leave it. <laughs> but what happens, what has been happening in our nation is we're wanting to, you know, sometimes things just aren't just. And we want justice and we're, we're not going to get it on this side. We'll eventually get, always get justice because God's a God of justice, but it may be on the other side before we get the justice that we're looking for. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of injustice in the world today. And we have Christians that are being murdered by the hundreds in India and China every day. And yet, you're probably wearing something that was made in China today. But we say that we're a nation that holds up the, the poor and holds up those who are oppressed. And we fight for them. Not always. You know, if God was really working in us and we were really serving God, I think that it would be a whole different thing. But with our nation right now, we cannot say, God, what's going on in this chaos in our nation right now is the fault of you because it's not his fault. It's our fault. You know, if somebody say it was my fault, come on, you can do it better than that. It was my fault. And I believe that one of the reasons it was my fault was because I haven't prayed hard enough for God to eradicate abortion. I believe that one of the things that God is holding against our nation in a strong way is this thing of abortion. You know, we've murdered 70 million babies in the United States. What happened to suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not? What happened to that? And so there's no justice. You know, I've heard it said that one person goes into an abortion, or two people go into an abortion clinic and only one comes out. We have not used our voices to cry out to God for that. We've no notified our politicians, I'm not going to vote for you if you keep holding that up. But what has that done for us? Where has it brought us? You know, this guy here, Achan, he had this in his heart to begin with to go in there, go into that tent and steal that wedge and a couple of other things and take them away from God. And then he took them and he buried them. He hid them underneath. He tucked them under his, his tent. But you see, God knows how to sniff things out. 
So God has them uh, set themselves up. And he has them put uh, the different tribes in place. And of course the tribe of Judah has to come out. And so he brought, verse 17 says, that he brought the clan of Judah. Didn't call them a tribe there. He called them a clan. And he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man. Zabdi was taken. Then he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, Give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done and do not hide it from me. So he went ahead and told him what happened. Integrity and honesty are really, really big for God. You know, God doesn't, he is not a man that he should lie. So they selected that, that particular sin out and let us know for sure that God doesn't lie. There are things that God doesn't do because he's God. And there's things that you and I shouldn't do because we're made in the image of God. We are called out of darkness. He formed us and shaped us and made us into his image. And when he formed us and shaped us and made us into his image, he set within our spirit men and our hearts the ability to do what's right. I have seen in our nation a selfishness that has grown to incredible heights. Yes. It's unbelievable to me some of the things that are happening and yet people boast about their selfishness and what they get and what they do. Listen, I never, myself, I never feel like it's really right for me to uh, take something that I didn't work for. Now, people give us gifts, and we're thankful for that, but they give them to us because they want to give them, not because we just took them. And so what we do is we always want to honor those who give gifts. And we thank you and thank all different ones, and Pastor Pam, is, her writing is much better on these cards, in case you didn't notice these thank you cards that come at you. You know, I can see people reading my thank you cards. What is he saying here? <laughs> what language is this? <laughs> what is going on? But no, my heart's right. <laughs> if it's coming at you, you know that I'm thinking of you. <laughs> but I believe that you and I have no place to whine and cry about what's going on in our nation. We have no place for it. Because the truth is, we caused this mess. We allowed it. We weren't at, maybe at the forefront, you know, leading the charge, but we were certainly in the mass somewhere being for it. Some say, well, I've never been for abortion. Well, if you don't say anything about it, I'm sorry, but... What you don't speak against, you're for. And so we have to take responsibility for those things. God is not in any way responsible to us or beholden to us to do what we want him to do. And we have said that, well, we've had 400 years here, you know, as a nation and Things have gone pretty well until recently. And it's because God's been very, very patient with us for 400 years. Because America, though we say we started as a Christian nation, you know, there was trouble in the front. If you understand the history of the nation and know about the denominations and what the Presbyterians did and, and the Lutherans did and all that, you know, when we first became a nation, you'll see that there was a lot of corruption, things that went on, religious corruption, things that went on. So what happens to us is we want God to do what we want God to do. And God's saying, you know, I'm not responsible for that. And 
I'll do what I said I would do. And most of the time, what God said it would do, you know, he God's a consuming fire. And he burns up dross. And he burns up all that stubble, all that stuff. He burns that up. Now, the Bible tells us that uh, in Luke 3.16, I was going to actually use this this morning, but Luke 3.16, it says that, you know, that the Lord is going to uh, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, I don't believe that's judgment fire. I believe that's a zeal fire that burns within the heart of man to do the will of God. And what we're seeing in religious circles in our nation right now is not a bunch of people that are wanting to do the will of God. They're wanting God to do their will. And that doesn't work on God's table. So what happens is we end up with the Aikens that have come out of the AIs that have got the rest of us in trouble. Everybody else is looking and saying, well, why is he punishing me? You know, he was the one that stole, you know, we're responsible for one another. That's the way God sees it. God will pluck out a man or woman and set them in a place of leadership, but they're still responsible for those that they're leading. Verse 24 of that seventh chapter of the book of Joshua. Let me back up to 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent, talking about Achan's tent. And there it was, hidden in his tent, with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Let me pause here for a minute. Okay, verse 24. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, they brought them to the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones. And they burned him with fire after they had stoned them with stones. You know, this way of correcting things, correcting people's behavior, doesn't happen anymore in America anyway. They're still stoning people over in Iran and Iraq and, you know, Afghanistan. They still do that over there. We don't do that stuff here in America because it's considered barbarian. And uh, I, I personally... Uh, Say, if God wants it done, then we should be doing it God's way. But what happens here in our nation right now is we have people who are setting themselves up over, over our nation in positions of leadership who are operating in a spirit of witchcraft in our nation. And... We're not praying that God would remove them. I mean, I'm praying it. I'm not silently praying it. I'm saying, God, you see this person, what they're doing. They're operating in a spirit of witchcraft. Please don't allow that over our nation. Don't allow it over our land. And so I'm praying that God would cleanse our land. Because right now we're in a place we need to be cleansed. We need to go to the tent, get all the stuff out that's in the tent, take it and destroy it with everything else. I'm talking figuratively here. Because we have to get our land in a place where God can bless us. Do you understand that? I believe that there's individuals that are blessed and they're going to be blessed in this land. But right now, we're not positioned to be blessed by God. You know, what's the difference between us, Sodom, and Gomorrah? Not a. 
geography. They're over there and we're here. That's it. So what happens with us is if we're going to live like they lived in Sodom, then we're going to receive and reap what they received and reaped in Sodom. I think he's the same God. He says, I'm God and I don't change. And because he's God and he doesn't change, what we need to do is seek the Lord's face. He doesn't change from that perspective either. We can pray and God can send a mighty a revival across our land and we can have some of these people that are operating in the spirits of Jezebel and witchcraft to stand up and repent before a whole nation. They have an audience. A microphone and a light shows who they are and they can say these things. We need to hear that from them. Not this witchcraft that's going on right now. Not the crazy stuff that's happening in our nation right now. We've lost our minds. Totally. One thing about serving God in this hour, in our day, is that the Lord will bless the righteous. He's always there to say he'll do what's right. And so if we're righteous, we're going to be blessed by God. He's going to watch over us. He's going to protect us. He's going to be with us. But we cannot be like the world is and allow them to get away with saying and doing the things that they do without us expressing it, being a voice saying God is against that. Someone says, well, you know, they make fun if you say God is against that. And your point is? We should say it anyway. Jesus was mocked. He was mocked when they were putting him up on the cross. Come down from there. You know, you if you're the son of God, come off of the cross and do whatever. They were mocking him, and he was just dying for them. We're coming to a day, I believe this, with all my heart, there's going, to be, there's going to be a move of God, and there has to be a move of God in our nation. Because we're in a, we're in a place right now that's not a good place. And we're in a place that it wants to do some of the things that are happening over in these Middle Eastern countries where people are, are uh, tortured and different things are happening. And we think, well, that could never come to America, really? I don't want it to be here. I don't want to see any of that stuff come here. But I also need to figure out how to get on my knees and drive it away. Because God, his eyes are searching to and fro throughout the earth, seeking out a man whose heart is inclined towards him. And if we, men and women, incline our hearts towards God, I believe that his eyes will be upon us and the blessing of God will also be upon us because he's given us light. Why don't you stand with me? America, we, I just talked to Bishop Duku the other day, and uh, I got to talk to Alicia. FaceTimed her and stuff. She said that they wanted the church to, wanted to greet the church. Bishop Duku is a man who has always, always loved America. You know, and he, he believes that God's blessing is on America, and I believe God wants to bless America. But he's praying for our nation every day, is what he said. I'm praying for your nation every day. And I can remember when he first started coming, he always talked about 
how much America was so vibrant for the rest of the world and how he, God, you know, how God loved America and how he loved America and the people that were ruling and president at that time. But I haven't heard him say that lately. Yeah. But I know that he knows the way back. There is a way back into the grace of God. Yeah, I'm so thankful for that. And without that, where would we be? But, you know, why don't we come together to pray? Uh, we're going to have a prayer meeting again this Tuesday at noon. And let us covenant together to pray to seek God's face, that he would roll back the things that are happening in America now and bring forward the very presence and the glory of God. People are reaching out. They're, they're in a turmoil about this. We, can't, we have to settle our spirits and continue to pray and seek God. Speak the word of God. Let it be known. Let it come out of your mouth. Let it be heard what God wants to do in our land. Amen? Amen. Amen. See you at noon on Tuesday. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. Lord, we thank you for healing power that's flowing. Heal Brother John Green, Lord, he is going to have this uh, procedure. We pray that you touch him, Lord, and minister to him. Thank you, God, for those who need healing power flowing in their bodies right now, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for lifting your people up. Amen. Lord, you set us on high. That's what you said. You put our feet on a rock and you set us on high. So we thank you, Lord, for that. We pray, God, that you would remind us daily what our responsibility and obligation is to pray for our nation, but also remind us that you are for us and not against us. So we thank you, God, for that. We thank you for the power that works in us, Lord. We give you praise, Jesus. Minister to our nation, God, those who are in, a, in authority. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would put within them the right spirit, God. We thank you, Lord, for it. We pray for corruption to be eradicated from our nation, Lord. Thank you for doing it now, Lord, in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We love you. Praise the Lord. Um, if you...